Use the floor. You know what I've been kind of thinking is that we need to forget the cameras are here and talk more for our audio audience. Yeah, I mean, that's what I do every time we talk. Uh, I try to think of the uh, well, how it would sound audio-wise. Good. I'm glad one of us is. Have you been listening to it, uh, like audio, since? I've heard a couple. I haven't heard like the, every every audio episode, but I noticed there's some extended intros with nothing listenable happening. Uh, I don't know. I think I like the intros a lot. It makes me laugh. They're good in video form, but sometimes there's long pauses where the someone listening to audio wouldn't know what's happening. Uh, yeah, I guess. You know, or maybe that makes it a cool radio play, surrealism. You know, you can sing high notes. It just makes me, made me, I made, I realize that right now. You, you can do some high notes because I was trying to mimic you when you do the like the. Mm, I don't know, like you, you do the high pitch. Ones. When do I say that? I don't know, <laughs> but I'm thinking like you can hit those notes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What, let's. What's your highest note? This is. <laughs> Do we have the same high note? <laughs> Mine's all scratchy. <laughs> <laughs> feel like yours is a little higher. Yeah, mine's mine. is a little bit higher. <laughs> Mine what's, gets the lowest, all scratchy. what's the lowest you can do? <laughs> That's the lowest I can do. <laughs> Are our ranges like identical? <laughs> yeah, but you can do lower than me just by a little bit. I don't know. I... See? Damn boy. Damn boy. <laughs> but like it sounds a little deeper when I do it, but is the note actually any lower? I'm not I'm not sure. I think so. What do your note again? Ooh. <laughs> 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 okay, you might be right. I might have you beat on the low. <laughs> Okay, let's do the theme song. <laughs> I'll do low, you do high. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you you start. You know what? You you invented the catchiest odd casting. I think. <laughs> hey, yo, this, this is, is the odd cast. Hey, yo, this 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 is the odd cast. We keeping it? Yeah, let's keep it. Okay, now we're going to start by drinking some Lucky Buddha beer. Enlightened beer. You, you said this is from China, right? That's what it says. Yeah, okay. According to ancient internet proverbs, many people believe that you receive your luck from your left hand. Drink uh -huh. smart. Hey, you're a lefty. You, you were lucky. You did it. You drink it from the left hand? Oh, or maybe that's that? what you're supposed to do. It says that on the back. Maybe your proverb is different. According to the ancient, it may be able to receive with your left hand. Drinks more. Okay. This is good. I This reminds me of all those like Asian beers my grandfather used to drink. They all kind of taste the same, whether they're Chinese or Thai mm. or Japanese. But does it also kind of have a Heineken taste? It does have a Heineken taste. It has a lemon zest, zesty vibe. Not not citrusy, though. But it is a bit citrusy. It's good. Perfect for summer. Very bubbly. Yeah. Very carbonated. I wish I had one of those Lucky Cats. I actually got one of those for my mom for her birthday this year. Little waving cat. Uh, now I kind of want one too. Did you, did you give it to her for Mother's Day as well, or no? A, a second one? No, no I just no. gave her one back in March for her birthday. Um, story time. Um, do you still have that statue of Ganesh in your backyard, in your mom's backyard? Yes. I remember around that time that we hung out then. Um, my coworker was telling me this scary story. How he had like he had a friend who lived and he received a statue of Ganesh, and ever since he got that statue of Ganesh, bad things happened at his house. 
Mm. And they took the statue of Ganesh and things were calm afterwards. So maybe the statue's cursed or it was a f- screwed up look of Ganesh because I think it was, it didn't look like yours. Maybe it was the opposite hand or something. I've never when heard he was tell- cursed Indian objects. But when he was telling me that story, I thought of you guys because like you guys have that statue and there's no scary things happening at your house unless you haven't told me there's are scary ghost stories from your house or encounters or hauntings. I was trying to ghost hunt there last fall, actually, with the spirit box that swipes through the radio frequencies. Yeah, I kind of remember seeing that in the Instagram. You did that with Brooke. Yeah. Yeah, I saw uh, what happened. We got a voice that said my sister's full name, which is like three syllables, and it's it just said it. And it was in, so the spirit box had come, Rachel Robbie, uh-huh. although it's four. Oh, yeah, that's four syllables. It kind of sounded like Rabe, but Robbie. I heard that ye. I heard Rachel Robbie. Yeah. I swear to God. Do you know oh, Rachel? shit. <laughs> I heard that. We got to go back and hear that. Do you know Rachel? I, I heard that. But, um,. The spirit box works by every like millisecond. It's swiping to a different radio frequency, so the odds of it saying a real word or like recognizable name or something are pretty low. Do you still have that? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do more oh, wow. with it this summer. I'm planning on it. Have I annoyed you yet with my TikToks? I've been sending you some scary ghost stuff or scary haunting stuff. No, I always like those. <laughs> I I just feel like I sent you a lot this TikTok morning ones. or last morning. I haven't seen them yet. Okay. I've been a little bit of like a social media cleanse the past you, week. You should. You should. It's a good thing. I realized something. So I've been off work for a week now, and I realized that I was like going on TikTok and Instagram like when I'm all amped up on like social energy from my job. Mm-hmm. And when I'm not, when I'm just like in my own world, like I don't like entering that mindset as much. Like I... I feels very uncomfortable to me Mm -hmm. to be at home and then like interacting with the world that way. So I kind of just like ignore it Um, unless I'm like doing something outside. Then I'll be like on the phone. What? uh, Okay. We we talked about this before, but like I have social anxiety. I know you have social anxiety. So what do you do to fight that? Or do you just go with it and then afterwards you're like, ah, I'm drained. I'm not going to see you guys in three weeks. I'll be back. Pretty much. You don't do anything while that happens? Uh, I more like heavily self-medicate for social interactions. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then when I come down, I'm uh, in my little hole, not talking to anyone. What I do is... uh, Try to like act like everything's normal, but like I'm really, really anxious and scared. Not scared, but yeah, for lack of a better word, scared. Um, I try my best at that moment to ground myself and show them that like, like literally ground myself. Like I put all my energy to my feet and and like make sure that I'm thinking like my feet is touching the ground. (laughs) Because I, I, I don't know why, it just that makes me feel better, even though I, and I don't know what to say sometimes in certain things. And then, like, I sometimes say some really stupid things. Is that what they call grounding techniques? Yeah, I think so. That's what I, because I literally do it in the literal sense, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't know what it means besides that. Yeah. You just defined that for me. Does that, that, if that actually helps, that's such a healthy, just mental, spiritual way to get over anxiety. Yeah, it does help, <laughs> but I've been noticing that, like, I, I I don't have, it's not that severe, but, like, I kind of have feet problems now because, like, I <laughs> literally crent, like, clench to the, to the ground, to the soles of my shoes. <laughs> How often would you say you do this? Oh, I did it a lot back in the day, but now not as much, at least once a week. How how does that even feel? You just like exert pressure on the floor, on the somewhere? toes. Yeah, on the toes. You just put all the pressure on your toes, and just to act like, "Hey, Abe, how's it going?" <laughs> Are you standing on your toes? Yes, I'm standing on my not not standing on my toes. I'm standing on on this, 
and then clench on the toes. <laughs> I'll have to try that sometime. Seems healthier than just like getting drunk to go to a party. Just clench oh, your feet. Do, I can't do that. I can't, can't get drunk. I, 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 I can't get drunk before getting drunk. I don't know. I just I, I have been doing it. You don't pregame for anything. I have now for the fact that things are expensive. Right. So I do that. So yeah, I can feel good. It's an economical and a anxiety alleviating, alleviating, alleviating um, technique. Mm-hmm. I wonder how the listeners feel about us on non-episode tangents. That's we, a good question. I, I sh- I'm going to ask what they think of that. Some people are like uh, there was some people was like, oh, just get onto the topic already." Yeah, which we should. Who really cares about this topic? <laughs> You're the one who thought of it. For for the viewers, the topic for today is our top five favorite singers, which was uh, inspired by one of the commenters, uh, Neutrogena. Who, uh, who you know in real life. Who right? I know in real life. Are you like longtime friends? Yes, she's one of my uh, grade school friends. Wow. So, um, yeah, and she really liked our guitar episode. Yeah. And she said you should do more of top five and gave an example. So, I actually do think it'd be fun to do like top five bassists and drummers. I was thinking top five bassists uh, in the future. That's one of, one of the ones I'd like to do, but... I feel like the, the instrumentalists moment. are easier in yeah. a way. Because we can geek out more. Yeah. And I, I don't know about you, Dylan. I'm not a singer. I was going to say the same <laughs> thing. Like, we we both enjoy singing. We sing on a lot of the episodes, but we're not trained vocalists. And we don't know jack about the science of singing <laughs> or, like, what makes someone technically good. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, make... We're going to limit our viewers for me making fun of singers. Like, there are <laughs> certain singers out there who, they're very, I mean, if you're a good singer, you're a great singer, but there's a the kind of singers like the the Broadway singers who like to bulk it out, you know, just blurb it out. And you can tell that they do have skill and everything, but it but it's all show. It doesn't have meaning. Yeah, I feel the same way about overly showy singers. I don't like that kind of like super wide vibrato on every single note, like technical gymnastics with the voice. It just turns me off. But there's a sweet spot. Like I like a, a singer who can like really like do some runs and hit some nice notes like Derek Trucks on slide like that. That but a singer, that's super cool. Mariah when they're really Carey in tune. Can do it. What? Mariah Carey can do it. Oh, yeah, totally. She's not going to be on my list, but... She's not she's, in my list. She's really great. She's an honorable mention. I have a lot of those. I have a lot of honorable mentions. I haven't even decided who my... <laughs> I shouldn't say this, but I haven't decided my list. I'm going to be looking over my shoulder at my text file and being like, okay, I'll choose well, this one. It is... Um, it's Neil Young. <laughs> 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 and then the uh, the camera dies. Oh, that reminds me. I got to make sure this doesn't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. Make sure this computer doesn't die on me. So I have my top five, um, and I'm doing it from not least favorite, but like five to one, one being my most favorite. So you're doing a normal top five. Yeah, doing time. a normal top five this time. Unlike the last time. Unlike like the last time, yeah. That would yeah, I thought last time was a good list, you know? I should switch to coffee. I need a little warm boost of energy. I'm going to uh mimic you. Shout out to Brett Butler Pottery. You can find him on uh Facebook and maybe Etsy. I don't actually know if he's on Etsy. Yeah, he's trying to make his career of doing pottery, you know. He could be a good contestant of that pottery show in England. There's a it's pottery an H- show? Yeah, it's an HBO Max. It's like one of those pottery com- competition shows. Is it all like wheel throwing or do they just make sculptural Ooh, random pottery? Wheel throwing, wheel throwing. Oh, that's cool. And with cool. the British accent and everything. With the passive aggressive politeness. <laughs> that doesn't look very clean, ain't it? There's something, I don't know. 
That sounds like a Southern American. Yeah, I can't. I can't do. I can't do it right now. I feel pressured. <laughs> yeah, I don't I know how you'd pressured. say that sentence in British. That doesn't look very clean, mate. You just add mate to the end of it. Uh, ain't it? They say ain't it in a really interesting way. In it. In it. In it. <laughs> um, the British. Look, you cheeky cunt. <laughs> it's not a well polished mug. <laughs> I don't know. Should we censor the word, the C word? I mean, in the context, they understand. Americans understand that I'm making fun of British people. <laughs> well, then it's okay. Yeah. We'll have to put the explicit tag when this one goes Beep. on Spotify. <laughs> this is not a family friendly episode. Uh, one of my portrait drawing students told me there's a British game show of portrait art, and it sounded really cool. Ah. I think it's British. And they have four mm. hours to make like a portrait in any medium. It could uh-huh. be oil on canvas. It could be pencil. Dude. And she told me this because she felt like I was rushing her by giving her like an hour and a half time limit with the model to do a portrait. Uh-huh. And she was like, you know, there's this British reality show where they get four hours. And even that is too fast. <laughs> and then we got to talking about it. She said it's pretty good. I want to look it up. Okay. Now you got me hooked. Um they have some good in the Bake Off. They're they're There's, really good with reality. Uh, I don't know if it's well known here in Chicago, but like they have like art competitions where like you kind of have a time, like kind of like what they're saying, like at art galleries, where a bunch of artists come by and they start doing art right then and there, and then you judge it afterwards. Like the audience judges it. I've never heard of that. They, but they did that in Elgin, and they, like a lot of people came by. I thought it was kind of corny, so I didn't go do it. <laughs> but like a friend of mine told me how it went, and it was pretty interesting because certain artists did everything completely different. It could be from abstract to Morocco art, but the the whole premise is that you do the art right then and there. And anyone can sign up. You don't have to be. And a professional I think anyone can artist. sign up, but you just you bring your own stuff, kind of thing. You bring your own supplies. Maybe they. What's that thing called? The eel? The 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 easel? The easel. Maybe maybe they they have an easel for you or something. But then easels are expensive, man. Very expensive. Depends on the type, yeah. but like a couple hundred bucks probably easily. Dude, I sent you a TikTok. I don't know if it's gonna piss you off or if it's gonna make you feel like, oh, that's a good idea. This motherfucker bought a used easel kind of the one that you have mm-hmm. and they're expensive right like two hundred dollars four hundred dollars that was a gift from my mom i don't actually know how but much but i mean i went to blix and it's it's a pretty penny this guy bought it used and guess what he uses it as a tv stand <laughs> and he was showing you how he installed it and put the tv stand and everything and he decided to put a frame around the tv stand around the tv so it's make, like a painting. So it looks like a painting. That's so dumb. <laughs> but then he took it off, and then I'm like, I kind of like the frame. <laughs> Put it back on. <laughs> the thing is, people don't work on paintings with a frame on them on their easel. No, that it's a, it's afterwards. I guess you could display a painting on an easel, but that's kind of tacky. Whenever you go to like an art fair and uh-huh. there's stuff on an easel. I also sent you another video on the Instagrams of that. Uh, auction that magritte auction that was pretty fascinating it made like 40 million or something right 36.5 million it just that guy the auctioneer guy was one of the best auctioneers i've ever seen he was like lean. he's like thank you for being patient 26.5 can we round it up to 27 27 27 ladies and gentlemen to the right <laughs> like i don't know cool. he just he knew how like it was like jedi minds like talking to them and everything. It was very weird. And I like the South Side where they rap faster than Eminem. At auctions? Yeah, at auctions, yeah. I've never been to a real auction. Uh, no, I Have just you? seen them. No, I haven't. <laughs> um, is it okay if the screen looks like that? Um, yeah, screen save is okay. Black screen would save. be a cause for concern. Concern, okay. So do you want to go first on your top five list? Uh, why don't you go first? Because I don't okay. know who my five is. Well... I don't know how you feel about this, but I already have the videos listed so you can watch the video Perfect. and see, kind of do a reaction thing because I noticed that YouTube viewers love reactions. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So I'm going a little bit controversial, 
on my top, on my fifth pick. But I want to say this, that like if Rolling Stones made a top list of the best singers of all time, this person should be number one. Which I actually looked at their Rolling Stone list of top 200, I think. Uh-huh. It's all the people you'd expect. Yeah. But I wonder if I'll remember this person on it. This person should be number one. And I'm sorry if it's number five for me. Like, I like her a lot, but she she's, you know, she inspired me a lot, and I like sing, listening to her a lot. But the other people on my list are inspired me more, musically speaking or vocally speaking. And my number five is Billie Holiday. Nice. So, <clears throat> I didn't, she was definitely on the list, but she's not number one. I think they put Aretha Franklin number one. Ooh, I think Billy's better. All right, so different era, right? Yeah. Oh, we're doing Strange Fruit. Yep. <laughs> right to the heavy. It's a heavy one. Do you like when she does the, like the vibrato thing? Like her, she's her one vibrato is nice. I I don't find it annoying. Yeah, like not like Joan Baez. Hers just she uses it too much. Her Billy Holiday's is tastefully done. Yeah, and she's got such an unusual voice. Strange fruit hanging from the. What what year is this? Is like the 20s or 30s? No, 40s or 50s. Okay. Do you know the story about this song? Well, it's about like lynching. Yeah, it's... Yes, yes. Okay, I don't know anything A guy wrote this song. I forget his name. Showed it to Billy. Billy's like, I'm down. I'm going to sing this song. Then I forget the guy's name, but there was this FBI agent who hated her and hated that song. So he did everything he could to stop this song to be popular. That also meant ruining her life and all of that stuff. So what did Billy do? He went, she went rebel. It was like, I'm going to sing this song more than ever. And because of that, it kind of ruined her life because she died poor and she died alone and no one heard about this song or cared about this song while, it was, while she was alive until afterwards when she died, it got more bigger. So in some ways, that FBI agent was happy that that happened, like it, his wish to come true. But after he died, the song got bigger. So his, you know, his hard work did not go through at all. I did yeah. not know any of that. Yeah, she had. She was already like a pretty successful singer, though, except for other songs. Yeah, but this song really ruined her career. There's a movie about her from recently, like a year or two ago. I didn't know that. Somebody told me to watch it, and I forget who played her. It wasn't Beyonce, was it? Beyonce did Etta James for that Cadillac Records one, which I still need to see. <laughs> it was a pretty good movie. I did I did see that. Just looking at the picture, she kind of looks a little like Beyonce when she's young. I think she's cuter than Beyonce. They're both quite beautiful. Yeah, they are. They are. I How old was she when she recorded this? Do you know? Don't know. Don't know. Ooh, that's Ooh, the first time guitar. I heard a guitar. Look at us talking <laughs> about guitars. Okay, that's my number five. Well, go expand a little bit. What is it about her that you like beyond the story and the the re- rebellious nature of singing that song? I'm all about the blues. <laughs> I'm all about that. Uh, Can I use the, your... C- computer for mine too. Yeah, totally. Because I don't have my, I don't have it set or queued up yet. But we'll just keep it close. Well, the thing is, uh, this um, there's a comment uh, quote that Billy Holiday say. I'm gonna paraphrase it because I don't know the quotes that well. It's like she says, "You either have the blues or you don't. You, you either sing the blues or you don't. Mm-hmm. You know, you you you, you don't. You, I mean, you can maybe learn how to play it or sing it." But it's something in your heart, you know, something in your soul. See, this is where I kind of get into fights with people. I prefer Billy over Ella Fitzgerald. I never heard Ella Fitzgerald sing like a meaningful song that makes me want to cry. 
But Ella can't sing and she knows how to scat. And I really like her scatting a lot. But I prefer Billy because Billy can hit the heart where no one else can, you know? I'm not one else can. And I remember there was a story where she was touring in Europe and she went to some cafe or at a bar in Greece and there was this woman singing and she doesn't know what the hell she was saying because it's a different language, but she was feeling it. And she said to her companion at the time, was like, that woman, she's got the blues, even though they weren't singing the blues. Wait, Billy said that about another woman? Another woman, yeah, the, the Greek woman singing. Okay. So... Yeah, here's your YouTube. Here's your recommend. Looking forward to your number five. I don't. I have to look at my list. I don't oh, know who I'm gonna pick. The pressure. The pressure. The pressure. Oh. Fifteen people. Fifteen people. And now you have to choose between five. Um. Okay. Here's how I'm approaching this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to pick like the classics, the greats, because okay. we all know they're great. Yeah. And I've gone through phases of listening to a lot of quote unquote like great singers. And, and yeah. I'll, although I'll always love their work, but where I am at in life now, I'm, I'm more interested in maybe stuff I can emulate or like learn something from to adopt in my own music uh-huh. so i'm i'm going to more like contemporary people okay that's fine um and this is someone i just found out about like a week ago <laughs> <laughs> oh man this is gonna be good is it SZA? no oh. I'll, she was a close runner-up i've liked SZA for a long time i since know her control and i almost in fact you you were the one who introduced me to her i never heard of her until that one time we hung out and you had a record of her um yeah she's good i okay i'm gonna play a live version of a uh he's from israel but i think ethnically he might be kuwaiti or some some other middle eastern country and here he is he has a Album with Johnny Greenwood. His name is Dudu Tassa. Have you heard of this guy? Uh, did he have that album with him, with Johnny Greenwood in 2015? Uh, they've worked together on a couple things, but I think they're, for the first time, doing like a full album together, like now. But they've, Johnny's like worked with him, played guitar on some of his oh, previous records. Oh, nice. Um, so just really soulful voice. I have no idea what he's, the lyrics are about. But... I've been really into like Middle Eastern singers and melodies lately. Like the the Phrygian mode, yeah, <laughs> is super cool. I love the Phrygian mode. I play that all the time in my in my acoustic guitar. Yeah, I've been playing it on like my loop pedal and stuff. So let's just play this song and yeah. let me know what you think. Yeah. Oh, I like that guitar. Look at that shirt showing his chest hair. The thing that makes vocalists kind of hard to critique or like list to me is that you're either born with a great voice or you're not. Kind of, you can't. It's not like an instrument where you can practice and like go from nothing to sounding great. True. Like it's just your, your vocal cords. You're born a certain way, and you can either get a certain tone or you can't. And I think he just has like a naturally very like rich voice, but it has just enough like edge and grit to it that it cuts through a mix really well what's this guy's name dudu tasa dudu tasa dudu is spelled d-u-d-u and t-a-s-s-a is he playing outside it looks like it is might be i like the chorus of this a lot is this the chorus yeah the studio version of this song is also really pretty but it's a little more like Kind of reminds Modern me of uh, the chorus. Reminds me of a little bit, just a little bit, like a little tiny bit, of a small fraction of that tiny bit of uh, Bob Dylan's Ballad of a Thin Man. But you don't know where it is, mm. do you, Mister Jones? Yeah, I could hear that. It's centered around like a single minor chord. Like that song, I think is an A minor. This one I was playing along with the other night, and I. I it's mostly just one minor 
cord the whole time. I've been I've been putting this on my on my to do list or on my list of things to do later, which is the same thing. I really want to learn Indian music theory, and I even talked to your sister about her giving me lessons because I really yeah. want to learn how to do it. And like, and I, there's YouTube videos on how to do it and what what's it called and the the bending note, the ah uh, thing, and all that yeah. stuff, and the slurs and all that stuff. It's so when someone does it, they're like, oh, that's pretty easy, but it's very hard to master. Yeah, do you remember that Instagram reel I sent you of the four or five different like ways they bend notes? Yeah, I'd, dude. I had never seen it written out like that, and it blew my mind to see like there's some little phrases to go like, rah, 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 like yeah. it kind of goes up and down. <laughs> And in the yeah. West, we just have like simple, like we have our own kind of runs, yeah. but they have their own crazy style. He kind of does a bit yeah. of that here. This, it's like Middle Eastern scat singing. Do you know the story of how they met? Um, Johnny Greenwood and Dudu? Yeah. I don't know. I think. Dudu Tassa has opened for Radiohead in the early 2000s, and that's probably when they started collaborating together. Johnny Greenwood. Yeah, so that's my number two. Well, I'm a number five, sorry. Your number five. Okay, not bad. Not bad. My number four. Seriously, where are you? Da, na, 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 na. I'll take this opportunity to decide who my next one's going to be. Um, okay, my number four... Arguably, he should be my number one because I, I love him a lot and he inspired me a lot. I think I know who this is. But I, the more I thought about it, it's like, no, I mean, he's a great singer, but these other people are better than him in some ways. But he inspired me a lot. And I, I kind of wish I had his vocal ranges. You want to take a wild guess who it is? The symbol. Who's the symbol? The artist formerly known as Oh no, he's no, he, he's not my number four. It's uh it's uh Captain Beefheart. Oh shit. I was not expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been trying to find I was trying to find a, a good live music video where it shows a, a good stamp of what he can do musically with his voice, I mean vocally. So I, I went with uh, Upon the My Oh My from 1974 when he goes a little bit funky, a little bit country-ish. Is this on Trout Mask? Right no, there? no, it's afterwards. A little bit, uh, you know, garage rock. But I think I think it's your cup of tea, and luckily there's a lot of uh, guitarists that are playing Les Pauls, and I think you'll enjoy that. <laughs> is it live? Yeah. Nice. All the, all the, all the ones that I have is live. To this, <laughs> see, I, I knew it. I like the Rickenbacker bass too. Fast is fast, low is low. Pound the mile by. The way he gets that high thing at the end of a phrase. No. So crazy. Him and Mariah Carey have one thing in common. They both can sing about eight octaves. <laughs> I've never heard that about Captain Beefheart. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't show it off like Mariah Carey, but you can hear it here and there, right? When he gets that really high, yeah. like, squeal. Yeah. Okay, this is cool. I... It just has a guitar solo just the way you like it. I, I'm, I'm enjoying your face reactions to this. 
is this one of the eras where he's telling the band exactly what to do? I think that's been all his career. Maybe maybe not the first album, Safe as Milk, but <laughs> afterwards, that was his whole career. He's being a lot less weird and outside the box on this compared to Trout Mask yeah. Replica. It sounds like a 70s rock song. Yeah, I mean, around this era, this is when he was getting into the country vibes. You hear a little bit of country. There are a lot of toms on that drum. And two two bass drums. Do you think Captain Beefheart is a better voice than Tom Waits? Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, I agree. hundred percent. This is a lot more exciting. And like, Do you know that Tom Waits did rip off Captain Beefheart? I can hear it. Like, uh, because he started doing that in 1983, 1984. And before that, he was just doing his normal voice. But around that time, his girlfriend at the time was like, hey, you need to check out Captain Beefheart. So he did. And then he was like, yeah, I like the way he sings. So he... You know, he took that. I, I I don't like Tom Waits, man. I just I think he's just a big ripoff of Captain Beefheart. He has a couple good songs. Uh, I like I like albums. the um, postcard from a prostitute in Christmas Eve song, whatever it's called. It's from 1974, 1975. Um, I don't remember that one. There's Jersey Girl. Does he have a song called Jersey Girl? Uh-huh. Or am I thinking of Bruce Springsteen? <laughs> Are they both from Joyzy? I don't know about Tom. Where is Tom Waits from? Let me Google that right now. Where is Tom Waits from? Oh my God! You want to take a wild guess? It's just—it's the most poserish place ever. Somewhere where like LA, you, close enough. California, Pomona, California. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here you go. Okay. Number four, who would it be out of the list of 15 people? Another contemporary person. I I would find a live one of this, but I l- just like the studio one a lot. Okay, that's so. fine. I'm not going to judge you. But to really hear her vocal range, maybe it's better to hear. But you don't know, have you heard it before? No. Well, actually, I have heard a couple of these live versions, but I I like the original because this is more modern modern vocals, you know, how everything's processed to, to infinity, like pop, and like everyone's using a lot of pitch correction to make the notes perfect. Yeah. I have mixed feelings about that trend kind of like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't like if you don't use the tools and mm-hmm. your music is a little imperfect people are just going to think it sounds bad mm-hmm. so this artist is someone who she can sing really in tune and like she's a very technically skilled vocalist and she uses like auto-tune creatively I think but she can also sing without it um, this is from her her last album she has a new one out this year, which is also really good. But this, I like her. I've heard her previous one more. This is Caroline Polachek. I don't know. I have not. I don't know that. Where's she from? Is she American? She's American. I don't know where in this the is States. Gonna be torture before it's so this is the first time I'm hearing this person. Does that make it crazy? How did you hear this person? Like, where did you stumble upon this person? Probably YouTube, like, uh, seeing a music video. This uh, isn't the first song I heard by her, but it's one of my favorites. So you can, like, hear the auto-tune in yeah. it, but it's subtle. Yeah, like, you it's can... It's not, like, you robotic. Know, you know that she doesn't need it. You know what I mean? It's only there for artistic purposes. Yeah. It gives me, uh, what's the name of that famous singer, uh, famous songwriter, Sia? Yeah. The Chandelier Girl? Yeah. I I think of that, and I also think of Jewel. Hmm. I hear a little bit of Jewel. 
Just in the tone of her voice? In the tone of her voice, yeah. I used to really like Jewel, actually. Even in her pop phase, she has an album called 0304, which is very modern yeah. pop from those years. Show me the future. I really like the yeah. chorus of this song. It has these crazy runs on the word tears. Mm-hmm. Let's listen for it in the next chorus. Do you like this kind of music at all? Uh, yeah, it depends. I was gonna say this is the interesting side of you. Like you, you surprise me when you like pop music like this. I, it's probably my favorite genre, honestly. <laughs> Twenty twenty pop music. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> if it's good, I don't like a lot of artists like this, but she's probably one of my favorite who is currently working. You know, I was gonna put Grimes on my list because I really like her music, but. It's funny, Caroline Polachek actually has a song with Grimes on her latest album, uh-huh. and it just shows how much weaker Grimes' is just voice is. <laughs> That's funny. Like, her, her voice is... It goes back to what I was saying about, like, you're, you're born with it or you're not. Yeah. Like, her voice is just naturally pleasing. It has, like... It's all frequencies, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been nerding out about this so much in producing and mixing, so, like, some voices sit in a mix better than others and Grimes is compared to hers in the same song for one thing there was way too much autotune on her and Grimes likes to use autotune all the time but her voice is a lot more like whiny and shrill and stuff so I I went with Caroline instead of Grimes but I like them both as artists I am enjoying your list so far first Doodoo now Caroline this is interesting 5-4 this cool. is good. This is good. I'm, makes, I'm glad. I like yours too. Makes my list look pretty predictable. Feels very predictable. But then again, <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of jumping off the wall here and just picking like the random shit I've been listening to recently. I mean, that's why you got 15 people on your list. Mm-hmm. Okay. My, yeah, this is a good one. Um, I haven't heard of her, so I can't make an opinion, but I, she does know how to sing. She, she, what is that thing called? Will you like Mariah Carey does it a lot? The ghost whistling when you mm. and like uh what the hell is her name ariana grande does it too where you h- hit those high notes yeah and they, it sounds they like your whistle. whistle whistle tones oh, yeah so like she can do that i can tell that i can see that she can do that kind of stuff i thought you're gonna go with the term melisma for those <laughs> the is keeping one called? that's when you do one syllable stretched across multiple notes yeah. it's like a run a vocal run is a melisma and carol i think that's i don't know that's something that a lot of singers today whether they're in r&b or pop or even rock they're getting all that from like great r&b soul singers like mariah and mm-hmm. or like whitney houston they started that whole trend of going crazy with the runs and i i'm into it i like that kind of stuff yeah those are good stuff but this is my number three pick before I talk about it, I just want to geek out a bit. Maybe maybe I'm talking out of my ass. Feel free to correct me if I'm talking out of my ass. But like when it comes to male singers, there's been certain people who kind of not rip off. Like yeah, you can say rip off, but like they, if it wasn't for this person, you know, we wouldn't have all these people that inspired them. Like they're the original, the tr- the, the original trendsetter. And Elvis was the original one because if you, you can hear Jim Morrison in Elvis. You can hear Eddie Vedder in Elvis. You can hear all that kind of stuff, like that tone. And no, Elvis <laughs> is not my number three. But I've been thinking there are other trendsetters out there who help the male vocalists out there or AMAB vocalists out there. Elvis is one of them, unfortunately. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly liking Elvis. I used to hate him a lot. I'm slowly enjoying it. And so I'm trying to think of other male singers that helped rock and roll music or music, period. And my number three is Holland Wolf. I'm going to show you how to play the blues. Cool. Now you okay. just sit here and watch me. 
like, you know, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have Captain Beefheart. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have those metal singers. So he he's the forefather of like the Cookie Monster thrash metal, <laughs> death metal vocals. Yes. Oh, this is he's doing Death's My Broom. Yes, by Elmore James. Yeah. He was a guitarist too. He is, but, but he, pl- he plays him. rhythm. But like sometimes, if he doesn't want to play guitar, he doesn't play. He also plays harmonica too. The song doesn't really hit the same without the slide. That guitarist is just playing it with his finger. You know that the guitarist, he doesn't play with a pick at all? No, I didn't. It's all fingers. That's, that's his rule. When it comes to playing guitar, he doesn't want to play a pick at all. The guitarist here? Yeah. Is he someone famous? For me, it's not famous like in everybody households know who he is. Like, But like Eric Clapton nerds or Jeff Beck nerds know who he is. That's Herbert Sumlin. Okay, I've yeah. heard that name. Yeah, he's one of my favorite blues guitarists out there. In fact, there was a period in my life where, like, if I'm going to play blues, I'm not going to play with a pick. You know, because that'll definitely slow me down on purpose. Because I sometimes, you know, when you play fast, you play fast. Maybe if I don't play with a pick, mm. it'll yeah, try to just you to play more from the soul. Yeah, so that's I, what I try to do. That's good advice. We've got an interesting list so far. A lot of classic blues and ra- very gritty, raspy voices. Yeah. When, when these are your favorite, do you like wish your voice sounded more like these? Yes, guys? of course. Especially Holland Wolf and Captain Before. Yeah. Are you into female singers who have some of that, like Janis Joplin or people like that? Uh, I mean, uh, a little bit, but. Um, Jan is here and there, but not, not as much. She can be a hit or miss. I may be wrong, but this was recorded on the neck of, a, uh, like, on our backyards. This was recorded in Teresa's, which is a famous blues uh, bar, which is on 48th in Indiana, which is now somebody's home. Wow. But back back then, it was like a hopping blues place. Like a, it was a, what do you call those? Uh, Dive, it was a dive bar, but it was the place to go to. But, is Holland Wolf from Chicago? Or no? He was born down south, but he lived in Chicago. So. Cool. I uh, don't know much about Holland Wolf. In fact, his, his graveyard is outside of Chicago, close to Forest Park. It's in Hillside, Illinois. I believe the same graveyard, if not the same graveyard, it's one block away uh, as Al Capone's. Have you been? Yeah, yeah. Really? I, I, I've been, I, I haven't been there in five, six years. I should go there again. Did you go just to visit Howlin' Wolf's grave? Yes. Wow. Because I'm a nerd like that. <laughs> wow. How does it feel when you go to a gravesite of an artist you really admire? Do you get a, a emotional charge I, you from know, it? This is funny you say that. Because sometimes I go there so I can feel something like like a spirit, like not like an exorcism, but like 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 something coming inside me and like a possession. G- it gives me like motivation to do it. But when I go there, I'm like, huh, okay, <laughs> cool. But then I start reminiscing and I'm started thinking like like literally the things like, huh, the guy that I like is six feet underneath me. Kind of crazy. <laughs> he's he's just there rotting. Wow, I wonder. I wonder where it is exactly, since there's so many graveyards very close by. I wonder if they're touching. That's the stuff I start asking myself, and then my mind just goes from that place to another thing. And then I'm thinking, oh yeah, yeah, I'm here because of I'm in the graveside of this person, huh? But I will say, yeah, when you I do bring go to a spirit box next time, they're popular oh, tools shit. in graveyards. Let's, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. But I will say, I do feel. I, not a creepiness vibe because I do feel I do sense something when I go to a cemetery. Like I do sense like maybe not that something's watching me, but that's the best thing I can explain. Like explain it. 
like a somber like audience just looking at me. And I will say this, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I don't have any special magic powers or any <laughs> like like I don't I don't have a medium. I don't I'm not a medium. But I will say this about myself is that I do sense, I do feel something. If something happens, I do feel like, oh, there's something in this room that is not us. Like, that's my magic, my juju, if you will. Do you get that feeling often, that there's something around you? Not often. When I was living at the funeral home, I did a lot. Uh. When I was living there a lot. And, And then the way that it stopped, that I just talked out loud. It was like, I said, hey, I know you're here. Leave me alone. Could you just walk away? Could you just 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 back off? And then like two, t- uh, 10 seconds later, I don't feel that anymore. It oh. could be a placebo effect. But I don't know. That just that happened. Oh, sorry. Now your turn. Shit. This is your number three, okay? So, so far, number five is Doodoo. Number four is Caroline Polachek. Uh, your number three is... Ooh, this is way too hard. Is it? <laughs> you thought of this. <laughs> I know, and I should have listened to you when you said, like, we should do top five male singers, top five female. Yeah. That, that would have been easier. But it's instead, very hard uh, to choose just top five general ones, man, because it, it's, it's, it's a different niche. All right. Well, I want to give a shout out to some of the, the heavy vocalists who have inspired me over the years. Oh, is it Billy Corgan? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do think his singing on the early albums is underrated. I think he had a good approach to singing up until like 95 and then, well, actually all through the 90s. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. It's like that first breakup. He lost his mind a little and forgot what good music You is. need to tell me. Oh, first band breakup. I thought it was like girlfriend, oh, yeah. boyfriend, or husband breakup. Or no, the breakup. band breakup. I think really Darcy Retsky was the key to that band sounding good. Darcy's the bassist, right? Yeah. She's but never like, made a good A lot of people made fun her. of her, though, because cause she didn't know how to play it. Like She just played you know, she, quarter notes. She could play. Or eight notes. No, you watch the live videos from the early 90s. She's playing like pretty intricate bass stuff, but it's all stuff that Billy played in the studio up until uh-huh. Melancholy. Then she actually, I think, played on that actual album. Okay. Uh, I, I, as you're thinking, I'm going to go on a tangent with you. Who do you think is a better bassist when it comes to female bassist? Kim Gordon, Kim from the Breeders and Pixies. I forget her last name. What's it? Kim... Uh, Kim Gordon is from Sonic, Sonic Youth. Youth, but there's a, Kim the other Deal. Kim Deal or Darcy. Who's the better bassist? And uh, maybe I'm being misogynist by just having this question because it's all females. But like I do th- notice that that in the music world, uh, they give a bad rap to female musicians, especially bassists. Um. I, I don't think they get a bad rap. It was kind of a cliche for a while that, oh, you have a girl in the band, she's probably the bassist. Yeah. But I feel like that's not really a thing anymore. I see a lot more AFABs playing guitar and... Look at you <laughs> using the right terms. Singing and playing drums. Like, you see, just... Gender doesn't really, like, dictate what instrument you play anymore, which exactly. it kind of did for a while. I can't decide which song by this band I want to choose. Uh... But what you're thinking, uh, answer my question. Which one of the three do you think were the best? Was the best? I'm not really a big Pixies fan, and from what I've seen of Sonic Youth, Kim Gordon's not a great bassist. So by default, Darcy is my favorite. <laughs> but do you the, think Darcy uh, was trying to mimic Kim's look? Which one? Kim. Sorry, Kim Gordon. Kim Gordon. Like the long hair, looking oh. like uh, anorexically chic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really think they have that much of a similar vibe. And Kim Gordon has that really like husky, deep voice thing going on when like, she like sings. Like Nico? <laughs> a little bit. But a more like raw and yeah. punk. Where Darcy is more, I would say a little more goth. Sonic Youth is not goth at all. All right, I'm going with the song with just the one singer because the other one, they're two great singers in this band. 
Um, well, a great singer and an okay, a good singer. Uh, the the good singer would be Jerry Cantrell. The great singer, Lane Staley. Alice in Chains. Oh, dude, I haven't heard Alice in Chains in such a long time. Have you heard this from MTV Unplugged? No, no, I haven't. Oh, it's a great, great performance. Is he better than Chris Cornell? I like him a lot better than Chris Cornell. Ooh. Like, Chris is probably, was probably a more technically skilled singer, but he does that crazy rock vibrato thing that I find kind of cheesy. See, but, like, that's another example of, like, people who are, like, Elvis inspired, you know? Sure. He's get the, that's another example. Those early 90s bands, I thought that's where you were going with that, like, yeah. how Kurt Cobain made every grunge, post-grunge yeah. singer try to do that same, like, raspy yell. True. Lane has come out yet. I prefer their unplugged stuff from this concert a lot more than their albums, honestly. Mm. The heavy grunge metal. It's like if Eddie Vedder, but if Eddie Vedder could sing more coherent. <laughs> yeah. Similar, similar style. Uh, I'm going to ask a racist question, but... But I'm being sincere about this because, in a sociological standpoint, maybe you can help me in this. What is it with white people loving this kind of music? Like, but when it comes to, to vocalists like this and Eddie Vedder, I, I just listen to it and I'm like, I don't get it. Like, can you explain to me what's so cool about it? Man, I don't know. I've always, I actually, I didn't like Pearl, uh, Alice in Chains growing up. It's kind of the last few years that I was like, actually, this is good music. So maybe it's just getting older and becoming a uh, middle-aged white man, mm -hmm. middle -aged <laughs> half white. white. Cause I don't know how to describe it. I don't know how to answer that question. It just like, especially early Pearl Jam, you hear it on the radio, and it's like it's exciting. It's like all the blues rock guitar solos, and then some like angsty vocals over the top. I will say this: one of the most underrated instruments out there is the acoustic bass. Those are big on MTV Unplugged. Yeah. They're so quiet in real life, though. If you can mic uh, or amplify them. They, they can be loud. Weird. They can be loud. Unpl unplugged? Yeah, an, an acoustic bass, they can be loud. Oh. Every time I've like played one, it seems so quiet compared to uh, like an acoustic guitar. You know, maybe for me, the appeal of this song and this performance is how this is like his last public performance before he basically like became a a recluse, like just doing heroin in his apartment. And he was he'd lived a couple more years after this, but they were they basically were ended after this. Is this the story with Jimmy Chamberlain? No. You remember you told me how Jimmy and someone else. That was the guy who OD'd with Jimmy Chamberlain was a uh, touring keyboard player for the Smashing Pumpkins. I thought it was someone else, like a famous singer too. No, there might have been another incident like that, but the one where a guy died, it was their uh, keyboardist. But Lane Staley, he like basically self-destructed from heroin use and like just locked himself in his apartment or house and uh, – and died soon after, or a few years after this. And that kind of makes all the lyrics, if you listen to them, hit pretty hard. That they're mm. it's very they're somber. heartfelt. Yeah, very I, I like a good somber tune. I hear this. That's actually a really good song. That was the one I was going to pick next. Down in a hole. See, I, I don't know that much. Alice in Chains. I'm sorry. I do. Oh, I do. Okay. I do know that there's people who make the argument. That they like Don, uh, Alice in Chains, but they don't like that they cannot stick to a genre. Like, they want to be grunge, but not really. They want to be metal, but not really. They want to be punk, but not really. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought that, I think their output is pretty cohesive. Actually, it's it's very metal. It's like Jerry Cantrell writes some great 
metal hard rock riffs um but i like their softer side more and on that down in the hole performance jerry cantrell sings these beautiful harmonies with lane um but yeah it's a good question why do white people like pearl jam alice in chains would you classify soundgarden as that too (laughs) But at least, like, I mean, because Eddie Vedder and Chris Cornell has that one song, they, they both do it. Hunger the, Strike. I'm on my one way. And then Chris Cornell goes, I'm on my one way. Yeah, yeah. I, I think forget the name of the I'm song. I'm going hungry. Yeah, that, whatever. I don't know. I see. That's the <laughs> thing about it. Like, I don't know what they're saying. So I'm just like. That's actually a really good song. Phonetically, it is a good song. I do like that song. But Hunger like, Strike by Temple of the Dog, I think. Gandhi's taking notes. Um, yeah I mean and another person I would add on that list even though he is more coherent than other people but I noticed why people love them love this guy a lot is the singer from Blind Melon but I do like Blind Melon though there's some really catchy songs I've never listened to Blind Melon oh it's your cup of tea I think I'll have to give them another chance. Yeah. I've been like digging back into these '90s bands, that, the ones I kind of ignored mm-hmm. in the past, and Alice in Chains is one of them. I, in the past couple of years, I like started liking so, Pearl Jam. I no longer really like. I liked them a lot, <laughs> but people try to give me a chance, and I just can't do it. They have a few great albums, but their overall output, I don't think, is as strong as. Some people think it is. I think the only song I like is from that music video in 1997, 1998, where everything was animated. And it was like Armageddon, like the end of the world. It was very edgy. I don't know if I've seen that. It, it kind of reminded me of like Pink Floyd the Wall animations. Like, I remember one of the images I remember is like this cock pilot f- flying a jet, and he takes off his, his mask, and it's a skeleton. Things like that. And you're sure about the year, 97, 98? 97, 98, because it was also the first time uh, Pearl Jam uh, has a music video because they felt bad with the reputation of Jeremy. that, that they Because they had, they had the reputation that Jeremy was promoting uh, school, shooting. school shooting. So I'll have to look up yeah, that video. It's a good video, and I kind of want to watch it. But anyways, number two. Actually, before you go on, yeah. because you mentioned animated video, I want to make a little plug that in a couple of days, maybe when this podcast comes out, there's going to be a new Seven Dreams animated video. Oh, snap. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Is my face in it? It's it's our performance from Ride or Die in the Attic. I kind of uh-huh. added stuff to that video. I like cut us out of the background. And okay. It's like Mario Kart. I really want to learn how to do the stuff that you're doing because it's so cool when you're showing me. I remember that music video that you... Sh- um, maybe you didn't officially put it in. Maybe you did with the with the birds, with the with little bird hatching and all that stuff, and started singing. Yeah, that was a lechuga. A lechuga song, uh, isn't it sweet? Yeah, it was very cute, very funny, very creepy. My that cup was, of tea. Thanks. Yeah, I'm glad uh, that was my first couple videos last summer. Now I'm getting back into it for uh, Seven Dreams stuff, and this one I think it's going to be a good one. So. Be on the lookout for it. Ride or die. Seven Dreams YouTube. Okay, so my number two. If we had a different list, like top favorite females and top five favorite males, if we had a different list, she would be my number one as favorite female singers. Okay. Um, She would be number one. She would be number one if that was a female singer, but she's my number two for general, you know? We're already at number two. Wow. Yeah, we're number two. Yeah. So um, I would, was trying to find a song that hits, like, again, like a good tra- uh, tr- a tramp stamp, uh, tra- a, stamp of, uh, <laughs> a, a stamp of what she can do. And every time I hear her music, I kind of want to burst out crying because, like, she can, knows how to get someone, like, to the core. I mean, it's kind of a cliche and kind of annoying people make this argument that she's annoying that every time she sings she starts crying every time i mean (laughs) well that's that's the reputation she has i like it it's i like this kind of stuff and arguably she might be the first uh person in my list where she's not a raspy singer 
Billie Holiday is not really raspy, but, but but a little bit, but a little bit, but yeah. you know. Okay. But anyways, I am excited to hear what you think. I'm excited to just to see your reaction of it, because not that many people know who she is, other than Mexicans. She's a, she's the first Mexican on my list, and her name is Amalia Mendoza. She was really famous in the 50s, 1940s, 1950s, the golden age of of Mexican cinema and also Mexican music. You can make the argument. She, I think I don't know when she died, but she was, st- was still playing in the 70s and 80s here and there. But anyways, I'm going to show you. You obviously see who who's who because there's, there's only one singer. Okay. So I don't know the premise of this movie or, 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 or whatever, but so I can't explain to you what's going on. Oh, it's but, a movie. Because back in the day, in the 1950s, Mexican movies, what they did is like they showed all these famous singers, kind of like the Elvis movies, you know? They have these movies, but they showed songs with it. So mm-hmm. this is the excerpt from one of the movies. But anyways. Here you go. Let me know if you can see it. I can see it. Is that tequila or vodka? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Take a look. Take a wild guess what crying this is powerful is it real emotion i think it is she's in a movie it could be acting it could be acting but like i'm not a singer but like it's very hard to be in that thin line and that threshold when you're singing slash borderline yelling and she does it really well Do you, what is, is a song about something really sad? Yeah, I mean, I didn't listen to it that much, but... I mean, the crying, if it's not about, like, the saddest shit in the world, the crying I, seems a little weird. I think she's, it's kind of like that song, uh, the Dolly Parton song, Jolene. It's like Jolene, kind of like Jolene, but this way, you know? She's telling her, like, I love my man. Please don't take him away from me, I think. I didn't listen to it. Is she actually telling it to this character? Yeah. Like, they're fighting for the same guy? That's the vibe I'm getting. I don't know. I haven't seen the movie. But, you know, as I was watching this, I was just, like, hypnotized. Like, man, these actors are so beautiful. Yeah. You can tell who's the movie star and who's the singer. I mean, they're both very pretty, but that one who's just sitting there silently is... She's not in Exterminating Angel, is she? She looks a little familiar. Oh, I don't know, dude. <laughs> okay, there you go. It just ended abruptly. You know, we can talk more about her in a second, but it just reminds me, have you seen Mulholland Drive, the David Lynch movie? No, it's in my list. You got to see it. It reminds me of a song that there's a cover of Roy Orbison's Crying in yeah. Spanish. Yoron, Lorando? Yorando, okay. Yorando. We got to watch that real quick. Okay. It's related. It's not going to be my number. Okay. It's not on my list. I just okay. want to show you. Uh, show it to me. Well, while you do that, let me tell you a story. I uh, I have this coworker. She's, she's, she's not elderly, but she is of age. Like She is a mother of, of kids who are over the age of 20. Um, and you know, she's Mexican. So I talk, you know, I try to talk to her about Mexican culture, try to like, try to, try to connect. So I told her about Exterminating Angel, right? Mm -hmm. And I told her, it's like, it's a great movie. It's not a horror film, but it kind of is. Watch it. So she watched it. She could not finish it. You want to take a wild guess where she stopped watching it? She says that she's a scaredy cat for horror films. She can't do it. You want to take a wild guess where she's like, okay, this is too much. I can't see this anymore. 
Was it the hand? The fucking hand. It was the hand. The hand creeped her out. <laughs> she better not watch Wednesday. <laughs> but yeah, that's that. I was telling her that I was like, I think that movie inspired the Adams family. It's a, a beautiful movie. You should just watch the whole I movie. Should. But this happens t- like three quarters of the way through. There was again a TikTok I saw of people's. Are you a David Lynch fan? This is my favorite movie of his. And I like Blue Velvet too, but I don't like some of his other movies. I thought Blue Velvet was all right. I liked Eraserhead a lot. I never finished Eraserhead. I've seen the beginning. <laughs> Definitely watch Mulholland Drive. I think it's his best movie. I want to see his Disney movie. What? He has a Disney movie. It's about these two old men who are trying to be friends again. Black and white. I forget the name of it. This is pretty good. Wait till she belts out and she starts crying when she's singing too. <laughs> okay, okay. Senti todo. Yeah, it's a cappella too. What do you think of the makeup? Pretty 90s ish? Right there. Tequila Sunrise makeup? <laughs> I want to hear the Roy Orbison one now. Have you heard it? Yeah, I have, but I want to hear it now. He was like an honorable mention on my list, too. I really love some of Roy Orbison's stuff. The thing with Roy, though, is like, and I'm not not shitting on it, but like, it's interesting how he has a voice. But it's very monotone at the same time. But he can sing, but it's monotone. Uh, I never thought... Of, yeah, when he sings like in his lower range, I can hear that. But when wow. he does his like belting, like he's so he's almost like an opera, country opera singer. He goes okay. really high. Like another singer that does is a good singer, but they're very monotone-ish, even though there's a melody is the singer from Cake. Never really liked Cake. Really? I thought that would be your cup of tea. I don't really like that kind of like too cool for school monotone singing. Gotcha. There's some singers, there's a lot of singers, like I don't like Pavement either. Stephen Malcolmus kind of does that. Now that's white people music. Yeah. I haven't listened, I listen to Pavement here and there, but I... You're not white. I just, I haven't given it that much of a chance to have an opinion of it. But you've listened to more Cake? Yeah, than Pavement, yeah. But I, I, wow. I don't own a Pavement or a Cake album. Ooh, I own some Pavement CDs, but I haven't listened to them in a while. I used to like those Pavement records, but... But, um, yeah, let me tell you, you something. you want to say anything else about your singer, number two? She, she's just phenomenal. She's great. She's great. I'm what, curious what, you think? what, what you she think? sounds like outside of a movie. Oh, she, that's she, not she really, really talks. No, I mean, that like, is, she well, puts yeah. out full al- or like albums? or s- It's a different era. She, she's so. got albums, but, you know, it's one of those, like, single. she was a single person, like, you know. And like, usually p- performed in films? Performed in films. And she also performed in, like... With a mariachi and everything, um, but yeah, what do you think of her? What you, what, what, you 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 liked it, huh? Yeah, yeah I liked yeah, it. Yeah, it was uh, it was hard to get past the theatricality of a movie, like the crying. If that was her just on a stage at a concert yeah. giving that exact performance, I'd be like, oh my god, that's so raw the emotion. But yeah. it was in a movie. No, she does that <laughs> a lot. Was in performances. Like I was even contemplating showing you like her performing at a talk show in the 80s did you cry she was she she was crying oh my too. god yeah <laughs> what's her name again amalia mendoza 
Okay. Yeah, going back to Lynch, um, again, I went to a TikTok dive, and there was this TikToker. She kind of pissed me off, but not really. Just water under the bridge. But she was saying, movies that are Lynchian. Okay? And for me, when I hear that, I'm thinking of movies after Lynch or during Lynch's era, right? Um, but she was talking about pre-David Lynch? Pre-David Lynch film and movies. Claiming that he was ripping them off or something? No, she had nothing about claiming to rip him off or anything, but um, I think in the end she was explaining that these movies inspired Lynch or these movies have that Lynch vibe before Lynch. And they were showing a lot of Ingmar Bergman once, and then I thought of you instantly. One of the recommendations was Luis Buñuel, Un Chien Andalú. Oh. But I'm thinking more and more about it. Like maybe a Sterminator Angel has Lynchian vibes too. I could see them both having it because there's nothing that surreal and crazy in Exterminating Angel except for the hand. But David Lynch has those moments where the long stretches of the movie will be pretty normal, and yeah. then suddenly there'll be a sequence that's super bizarre. Exactly. Like, have you ever watched Twin Peaks? Yeah, I, I finished it. I never made I it past the first season. Oh, I didn't watch the new, new season? Well, this is what people tell me to watch it. Watch the first season. Watch the first five, six, seven episodes of the second season. And then watch the last episode of the second season. It's like skip parts of the second season? Yeah, we skip like episodes eight through... For you, how whatever, how why? many episodes? Because there's <laughs> a lot of watch it all. Why th- not? There's a lot of filler and a lot of stupid stuff I heard. So like I did that, and I didn't know that. Uh, what the hell's her name? Um, she's a famous actress in Boogie Nights. Can't remember. Okay, remember. well she's in in Twin Heather Peaks. Graham. Yes, she was in Twin Peaks. Her, and I didn't know that. I think that could have been one of her first roles too. Hmm. But like, she must have been really young. Yeah, she was. Uh, for, okay, so from basically finish watching, t- like watch the first season. I, uh, people are going to get angry. Watch the first season and then s- the beginning of the second season, like the part where they announce who killed Laura Palmer. Just finish watching that and then watch the ending. Okay, if, yeah. I, if I would go back. I do want to see the whole show because... I want to see the new ones. I heard they're pretty good. Uh, has David Lynch made a recent movie? Like, no. What's his most recent movie? I think it's a Twin Peaks stuff. Okay. So he so he's directing that. Or writing. He's part of the show. He's he's doing it. So have you ever heard David Lynch's music? Like he play he's not he doesn't actually know how to play guitar, but he uses the electric guitar as like a, s- a sound making device and makes music <laughs> with other people, like a band. So it, it sounds like music, but he's just over there with like a guitar flat on his lap, like a slide player, and he's just like plucking strings and messing with the whammy bar and he's like oh i love playing music it's just so creatively stimulating <laughs> who <laughs> he was a he was an artist a painter too did you know that he was originally trained as a painter in art school do you like his paintings they're kind of cool i saw one that was kind of a mix of animation and painting where he like animated stuff coming out of faces in a painting if i'm not mistaken if i'm not remembering it wrong mm, but sorry, you gotta show I, me that I after after off. the podcast if, yeah, if we can find it. Um, who do you think is a better... Who who do you like more, musically speaking? Uh, Lynch, David Lynch, or John Carpenter? John Carpenter's a very talented musician. He composed like the Halloween theme. Yeah, but which one do you like more? John Carpenter. Okay. okay <laughs> That's cool, a classic. Cool. David right. Lynch's music is pretty much unlistenable. <laughs> Okay, well anyway, right. I'm I'm being uh your number 2 is Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan, Pakistani um I guess it would be Muslim de- devotional music singing to Allah, uh-huh. but in Urdu, I think is the language of Pakistan. There's I'm, many languages. Yeah, but yeah. I think that's the language he sings in though. Uh yeah, have you have you heard his music before? I think I have. I can't remember it. There's Recently, a, we talked about a Jeff Buckley cover of that song oh, that he's covering this guy's that's, song. But is this the same song? It's no. not the same song. It's a different one that's uh-huh. one of my favorites. That's why I remember that name. That's why it was familiar. Yeah, it's a really good song. This is when he was getting really popular worldwide and collaborating with Western producers. So this album was like 
really slickly produced by I think a British guy. So it has like electric bass and with the tablas and it's all it's a really good album called Must a Must. <laughs> must a Must. Okay. And it's the audio only. The audio. Yeah. Audio. There's great footage of him. Audio. He was a very audio. heavy set man. He just sits in his concerts and died fairly young from some kind of health issue. Reminds me of that New Zealand guy who got famous by doing the cover of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I'm not sure who you're talking about. Come on, that famous big guy with the ukulele. Did he die? Yeah, he was big and he died because, you know, because of his lifestyle. Sounds familiar, but I can't remember. But you know the song, though, right? It's really famous. I know the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow. But his rendition of it is, is the most famous one. You'll have to remind me what it is after this. Okay. <laughs> so he's singing with like a group of guys. You know what it's talking about? Oh, you're talking about a well, lot. The chorus yeah. is nothing without you. And it could be like about God or it could be about your partner or it could I think the lyrics are pretty open ended and the universal is that a guitar I hear yeah there's guitar I just love when he goes for those long notes Nice whistle. Thank you. I wish I can whistle better. I can't whistle well either. That tabla. Did I tell you that time that I um, I bonded with your family this one time, because I they when I told them that I'm from Elgin. Uh-huh. And they were like, oh, yeah, we go to Elgin once a year to the Elgin Community College to see the Indian event. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I went there one time. And they were like, really? And then we bonded about that because they, they were surprised that I listened to that stuff. And, and, and Dance performances, or it was I was there for the music. There could have been dance, but I don't remember. Hmm. And there was a live, you know, a person playing the sitar and the tablas. What's the other Ooh. one? That's not the tablas, but you bang on it as well. Man- manga, manda, something like that. Uh, the tablas are the only percussion I know the name of, so yeah. I don't know. Well, no. anyways, I went there. I told her. Th- I told him this story. I didn't experience racism, but I did in some ways. I went there. You didn't experience racism at the event. I did. I did. I don't. People I want to like I want to say I you. didn't, but I did. How so? Because you weren't Indian. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, neither is my mom and sister, and they. But went. but but you guys are passable because you guys are Asian looking, you know. That, that doesn't no, matter. No, it's that totally doesn't, different. Look, look, look. Anyways, me and my friend went there. We're we're we're. we're I'm not white, but like I'm clear as cl- I'm clear. I'm 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 not brown, but I'm definitely ain't white, you know. Anyways, me and my friend are there, and they're the, in the same complexity of skin as me, but she's Mexican too. We both go there. Everyone giving us the dirty looks everyone and i'm here i am being naive smiling like this is cool stuff like but i think they kind of wind down a bit like they they put their defenses lower when they knew that we were there to enjoy the music but they were they were giving us the dirty look they're giving us the stink eye every like 10 seconds wow but i'm okay with that i had a good time (laughs) I didn't ruin anybody's vibe. Well, I mean, maybe I did. What was this event? I don't. It was I don't an think it was I've an Elgin been. Community College. They, I guess, because talking to your sister, she told me that they do this once a year. This is pre-COVID times, um, and they do it like around August. Because mm-hmm. she told me that she, her and your mom went, goes there, go there all the time, to Elgin around that time. And I think you went there too, right? You go there too, or you don't remember? You were like, nah, dad, nah, mom, I just want to do art. I'm going to just chill at home, listen I've... to the pumpkins. <laughs> B- Billy, I don't B- remember Billy, being at Elgin, but if this was before I met you, I probably didn't even know 
anything about Eldrin, so I just got in the car and went and just put like, your Walkman on and just listen to music. Yeah, there, I did your, that a lot. Just to your Jurassic Park soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you know that about me. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I don't remember going to the Elgin Community College, but I I wouldn't be surprised if I did go. Are you gonna pull up somewhere over the rainbow no, by the Australian guy? I guess. <laughs> Um. No, this is a good guy. You got to give me more of his stuff. I want to listen to more of it. Cuz this is another guy I listened to back in the day. I he's Pakistani. Uh I forget his full name, but his last name was Khan, K H A N. Which is kind hmm. of I don't know cuz there's many Khans. It's like their version of the Garcias, <laughs> you know, or or Johnson, <laughs> you know. <laughs> My name is Khan Garcia Johnson. <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. Or are you moving on to number one? No, I just want to show you the guy. Please, no commercials. Thank God. You gotta get ad block. That guy. You've heard this cover before. Once you hear his voice, you this. Is he Hawaiian? Uh, I forget. Either Hawaiian or New Zealander. Or from Fiji Islands, around that area. They played it everywhere in the movies, you know? Romantic comedies, stuff like that. (laughs) There's a guy on American Idol right now who kind of has this vibe. He's like a bigger Hawaiian guy who plays guitar. You never heard this before? Doesn't sound familiar. Damn, dude. I'm so blown away. I guess I don't watch a lot of romantic comedies. Oh, I guess that's a good thing. Because <laughs> I don't either, but like I do remember stumbling upon this many times. Have you seen everything, everywhere, all at once? Yeah, I did. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. It was really good. Pretty good. It was really, really good. I... I did think it was a little overrated, if I'm being honest. I, I, I will say this. I, I think the directors really just wanted to do a lot of crazy things. Yeah. And they thought to themselves, oh, man, we got to put a meaning behind this movie. We just can't do <laughs> crazy things. Ah, oh, why don't we talk about generational trauma? That makes sense. That'll all connect. <laughs> See, I liked the bigger themes of it about yeah. the the family and their issues and the the interpersonal stuff between the mom and her, and the husband and her daughter was interesting but it was way too much just pointless action for me. Oh, I like the pointless action. One what? of my favorite one of my favorite ones was the <laughs> the rocks. The universe where there was just two rocks and oh, then you yeah. see the subtitles. Yeah, that was cute too. I mean like the kung fu combat that went on for like 30 minutes per fight and just it was inventively shot. It was better yeah. than the last Matrix movie, which I also felt like they were kind of doing their own Matrix thing. I, I, I will say this, and, and it kind of gives you um, a sad reality of what where we live in this world, of how the world is going, the, where those are the kind of movies where now it, it, it grabs our attention. So many things has to happen to grab our attention. Like, what happened to the slow... Like, you know, slow burner films. People can't do it as much anymore, which is a sad thing. Yeah. Those still exist, but... Oh, they do exist, but, like, can a person sit down and watch it without any kind of distractions? And I, I'll admit, I'm guilty as too. Sometimes I watch a movie with my phone on, and oh, I yeah. shouldn't do that. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so we're to number one. I have two people on my number one list because I couldn't choose one. And I'll go with the first one, this one, uh, Ruben Alvaran from Café Tacuba. Mm. He's my number one because he inspired me a lot. Wait, you're getting two number ones? I, yeah. Okay, I'm doing two number okay, ones. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, and a lot of people say when I sing, I sound like him a lot, even though I don't. I'm a, it's a compliment. I'll take it. But at the same time, I don't take it because like, that guy's a good singer. I don't know how to sing. You do, though. No, I don't. But I will admit that like, because of how much I like him, I, you know, 
I I kind of like a mirror image of him. Another person told me that I sound like John Lennon too, and I like John Lennon a lot, but I don't think I sound like him. But people say so. You got his nose. Thank you. <laughs> um, Cut to a picture of your nose. <laughs> all right, so I was trying to find the right song from Cafe Tacuba that has his song, you know, his where he can do. But at the same time, I want to get something that you would enjoy. And this is one of my favorite songs that has very. You're you're putting a lot of like expectation, like a. Uh projection of what i would like i don't know i'm just trying to think what you would like or not but anyways this is one of the the most uh energizing like with a with a catchy beat songs Mm -hmm. um note what from what i found out from the rumor mills of the cafe de cuba fan base ruben alvaran he's not a fan of punk music and this music kind of has punk ish vibes it's uh, by his band, and yeah. they're doing a punk song, even kinda, though he doesn't kinda. like punk. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's the funny so part. he just sings? He's not a, he doesn't play a guitar or something? He's, he's not playing guitar in this, no. But he does play guitar here and there, but he's not playing guitar in this. Um, oh, I'm excited. I, even though you've shared songs by them yeah. with me before, I don't really know much yeah, know. about their music. I was going to make you a mixed CD of Café Tacuba songs, but then you told me... Uh, and then I was thinking, no, I'll make a playlist, a Spotify playlist. But you told me, he's like, no, dude, I don't do Spotify. Just give me a mix CD. This is like... Well, I don't have three, a CD player anymore. Three, four so. years ago with your car, you know, with your green car. Now you can make me a Spotify playlist. I'll just but use it on Brooke's account. This is the problem now. They don't have the whole discography in, uh, in Spotify. I guess there's some problems with, with, with the band and Warner Brothers because my favorite album from them is not in spotify and i want to show you that but it's on youtube it's weird but it's pirated though but anyways the song is pretty awesome in my opinion <laughs> so this is a live version or a studio live version so can you see it yeah <laughs> It's got like um, a bit of a violin femmes vibe around this era of Café Tacuba. Interesting. Is that an electric upright bass? Yeah. Also, this song, one of the few, if not the only song that has a guitar solo from the band. They don't do guitar solos. So this is a very unusual song for them. It's more a punk yeah. influence. He normally sings. Then his, his style is pretty punk, at least in this kind of song. I can hear the way he sings in your voice sometimes. <laughs> See what I mean? See? That's so high to be doing that kind of like punk inflection. I'm excited to hear what you think of the guitar solo. It's pretty simple. I like a simple guitar solo. I, I love the rhythm. The rhythm guitar. When when I uh, met them years ago, I was such a fanboy. I was like starstruck. I asked the guitarist, who's your favorite guitarist? You know? <laughs> Johnny Marr is his favorite guitarist. And then afterwards, I'm like, oh, I can hear it. I can definitely hear it. Did you know the basis of the Smiths just died? Yeah, rest in peace. Sad.
drums coming from? It's a drum machine. Oh. For the longest time, the band had no drummer. It was really? all drum machine. Up until 2004, they said, you know what? Let's add a drummer. So are they more of like an electro pop kind of band? A little bit, yeah. The, the great what thing the about this band, they were very uh, eclectic. They didn't just stick to one genre. Yeah. I'd be curious to hear some of their more like... Hear, hear this part. Hear this part. Sorry, you were saying something else. Sorry. Um, I was just saying I I want to hear some of their more eclectic stuff now because uh, I can hear the tone of his voice is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> he can get that like rasp, but with so much power and like the punk energy behind it. I talked to some people and they don't like his nasally voice. He always sounds like this. Like he sings through his nose. Can you show me like one softer song by them? Do you have any uh, that are like, because I've heard one, there was an album that you were like, this is kind of like the Mexican Beatles or something. Oh, I definitely think they're the Mexican Beatles in the sense of this. Um, like, uh, you know how the Beatles <laughs> has different eras and then later on they kind of notice like, you know, let's change our vibe and it's different from every album, right? Yeah. This band, they purposely said, hey, we finished this album. Let's do something completely different from this other album. And there's, you know, every time they challenge themselves by doing something way different. But uh, you want to know what's... Uh, let me see. Because you should send me one once, and I really liked the song. I think I liked it more than that one, just because that kind of like three-chord punk song yeah. is not my favorite genre of song. Yeah. Trying to, what my what mood are you feeling for? Something sad and quiet and and slow. <laughs> okay. Not that slow though. Mid tempo. Maybe some acoustic guitar. This 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 is the era where they decided to uh, have a drummer. So this now you'll hear a real drummer playing instead of a drum machine. He has some weird note choices. It's like microtonal. Yeah. Uh, that's so weird. It's interesting. Cuerpo, Cuerpo body? What? Yeah. You say body. Yeah. I recognize that word from the Mars Volta song. Uh, gotcha. I like this a lot more. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I mean, same guy, right? Yeah, it's the same guy. I think that was an like, impressive performance. Like his his voice, his stamina to do those long shrieking notes. That would tear my vocal. I think you'll enjoy the harmonies so. through here. Wow. The, the person doing the background is uh, the keyboardist. Maybe him too. I think you're going to like his little run from, from the end of this part. <laughs> you're going to love the high note. Maybe. I'm just I'm guessing.
So you, you prefer this one over the other one, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Do they have more music like that? Yeah, totally. They have a they have a little bit of everything. I figure they have their prolific band. Um, do you want me to show you my other one? Yeah, number make one? it a true number one. So give them both at once. Okay. Um, it was hard to find uh, a song, so I just went to the YouTube world and tried to find a song. And uh, luckily, this person did like a compilation of the best vocals. So it's not one song, it's like a compilation. No, then I found the one that like, okay, this this hits. Okay. So my number one as well is Prince. Prince is my homie. Uh, so you were right about, you know, when you were guessing, but, he, you know, Prince is number one. I think he's just fantastic. And when I see, he can sing those low notes. He can sing those high notes, obviously. When I saw him perform, he did a uh, Curtis Mayfield song, and he sang so low. He did one of those runs, runs where he like, like hit went so low that I'm like, <laughs> I didn't know he could do that, dude. And obviously, it's kind of hard to find that rendition or that cover of that Curtis Mayfield song he did. Was it Move On Up? No, it was it was a B side song. I I don't even know I don't even know the name of it. But I try to find one and. I guess another thing about this song is he had the flu while he was singing this song. According to this YouTube video, he was singing <laughs> with the flu. But uh, I think you're going to enjoy it because I, I was blown away as well. Little things you said The things you did to me He's so comical too, I love it. The facial expressions. That's all? That's all we're getting? Yeah. I mean that was that was impressive. What song is that? Do you know? Uh, Broken Hearted again. This one I don't know. You know, okay, well, Prince, who I feel like one day we might do a, a full episode oh on. Oh boy, oh boy. Because I would love to listen to some more Prince. I have limited exposure beyond the Purple Rain album. And then for some reason, growing up, my dad bought a CD from like 99, Rave Unto the Joy, Fantastic. Do you know that album? Yeah, I know that one. It's Rave like, Unto to the, the Joy, joy Fantastic. fantastic. I I, know that. I found I heard that album when I was like eight. It's not a good album or nine. It's not a good. It's album. I know it's not really considered one of his better albums, but there's some cool stuff on there. There's some like crazy like fuzzed out guitar mm. over like a pop '90s R&B song. But I now you can crucify me for this, and all the uh, Prince fans can yell at me. Yeah. But he's an example of someone who's like astronomically talented. But I feel like he wasn't blessed with the most pleasing voice. He he has that his own like quirk, like that, that like nasal yeah, kind of whine. A lot of people will agree with you there because I've talked to a lot of people. They just can't do the the high pitched. Like they don't like that he's high pitched. Oh, other people that. don't like his like what you were doing that like kind of like the like the detective noir voice kind of like a little bit what like uh, Dave Chappelle Exo Rose does oh. well, you'll sing here <laughs> but like here see um but it's an acquired taste it's a thing it's an acquired taste some people sometimes sometimes people will kind of like detune that to enjoy the rest of it or some people just grew to love it even more. But don't get me wrong; it's not an unpleasant voice at all. I yeah. think he his voice always sounds good, and the con- he writes songs that fit his voice, and he he 
he's so talented and he like found a way to make his voice sound great but mm -hmm. he's not like al green or somebody like some people but, just have a naturally like beautiful tone and but, his is kind of like eh. but the thing about him is he can mimic al green like that uh yeah i'm sure he can but it's not what like naturally comes out when he sings. he can like do it would be like an impression and he yeah. could do it so maybe it's all a choice maybe yeah. it's his taste and what he wants to sound like yeah i mean one of the arguments that people have about prince and sometimes even people in the prince fan base community is that prince could not be prince like he has to mimic someone else and then because of that he's all in one but the more you get into his music the more you feel his vibe prince is prince like it's there like yeah he does a little bit of james brown yeah he does a little bit of Jimi hendrix yeah he does a little bit of like ella fitzgerald or billy holiday but like the more you get into his music you see that it's just him doing that stuff he just happens to love that kind of stuff as well yeah and that's to say nothing of his musicianship his guitar playing his his he plays every instrument, right? Yeah, he does. You know, to this day, I know he knows how to play all these instruments, and I know that he's, when, he's, when he says that he's playing all the instruments in the uh, in the album, I believe it. But to this day, which maybe I should look into it, but to this day, I have not seen him play a horn instrument, uh, saxophone or trumpet, but like I know he plays it because it's in the album. Yeah... I've n I'd never thought of that either. Mm -hmm. I would assume that he would just get like the best horn player oh. in uh, Minneapolis area to play on his record. I mean, when it comes to live stuff, yeah, he will. But like when it, when he records it, he just wants it all done by himself. Okay, so your two number ones. <laughs> number one, who is your number one pick? Uh, well, uh, I actually don't know yet. You don't know yet. Okay, that's all good. You know, I'm trying to give like little honorable mentions to people on my list as we've been talking like i just brought up al green because i think his voice is magical and beautiful it is it is but i didn't want to use one of my top five on him um and i also want to kind of defend the fact that my list has been mainly male singers and uh i think caroline polichek is the only female i've had so far and i love female vocalists but uh, I think just because I identify as a man, I I identify with male vocalists more or something. I so I don't I like I don't know how else to explain it. But when I I'm giving my top my two number ones, like I I just want to gravitate towards two other male singers. Just go with uh, what inspired you the most. Um, because if not, I would. I could put Bjork on my list. We did a whole episode on her already. I have Amy Winehouse on here because I thought her last album she made before she died is a classic, and I always like listening to it. But I'm going to start with the one and only Tom York. More white Cut people music. My police. But I'm a little I don't know like what song he, I'm gonna choose. It's so interesting how he sings because he can sing those high notes, but like he's the master of of slurring notes. Slurring? Yeah. Like he sounds like he's kind of drunk. Yeah. No, you told me does. like what, what was the drug? Like 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 if he's on Xanax. Uh, like, ambient. Yeah, like he's singing always on ambient, but on <laughs> on, on 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 tempo and on key. Yeah, he has he has kind of a <laughs> not to bring up Billy Corrigan again, but he <laughs> was um he's doing the rounds promoting Atom at Autumn. So actually, is how it's pronounced the new new thirty song album by Smashing Pumpkins, and he was being asked about Radiohead by Zane Lowe on Apple Music interview, and he called Radiohead dissociative music. And he was using it almost as a pejorative term to like put down Radiohead because they've been so critically and commercially successful. And I bet he wishes Smashing Pumpkins were like held in that regard. You know, for a person that considers himself a Christian, I'm talking about Billy over here. He's very narcissistic, very yeah. narcissistic, <laughs> for sure. 
Um, well, I was going to, I'm trying to think of a Tom York song to show why, and I could pick something from any album, but I'm going to go with a song from Pablo Honey, their first album. Ooh. Because that shows Tom York, I think, at his most raw, just like, and he's the youngest, so I think when artists are really young, they have a different kind of elasticity to their vocal cords. They can stretch and like hit notes that maybe they can't later in life. They sing differently. He definitely mellowed out by like Kid A for sure. So this song, he's just all out belting the chorus and it's kind of a simplistic song, but uh, it's a good one. So, so let's start from the beginning. Have you heard this song, Stop Whispering? No. As we're listening to this, uh, I was having a conversation with Robert O. Martinez earlier. Um, and I'll ask you this question. Favorite Radiohead album? Probably in rainbows. Same here. Same here. Nice. I used to hate that album when it first came out. I Me thought it was too. stupid. I thought it was boring and slow. But yeah. then the songs like they open up and they're like they're deeper than pretty much anything else. Big time. Now I'm wishing I put on nude from In Rainbows. That's a great song. But I like this chorus. He sings very clean in this song. When he normally doesn't have the reputation of being a clean singer. Like when I mean like clean is words. like very polished, yeah. I think this album is underrated too by casual Radiohead fans and even diehard radio fans, Radiohead fans. All the love goes to their like post kid A weird electronic stuff, mm-hmm. but I think their first three albums are full of great material. Is he harmonizing with himself? There are harmonies, and I think they are Tom doubling his voice in the studio. I can see this in a rom-com, too. Yeah. Even the lyrics are kind of like rom-com friendly. Stop whispering. Start shouting. And this is, my, I guess, my second Radiohead member in my list because Johnny Greenwood was playing on the Doo Doo Tassa song. Yeah. I think they're going to be go down in history as maybe the most important band of this era. They are. Um, the Beatles, if you could, you could say, of the early 21st century. Why, why has it got to be Britain, man? Um, <laughs> I remember so back in the, tw- in the 20s, twi- Early 2010s, late 20, 2000s. Someone said this, and I I can't get it out of my head, that Radiohead is the greatest depressing band of all time, or the band greatest band that talks about depression of all time. Whatever. They're the greatest title. male manipulator band of all time. But, okay, yeah, I see that. But what what? <laughs> define, I don't see that. I don't like male that. Manipulator. I would say men, but male manipulator because of people who listen to them. See, have the reputation like the huge fan bases and I'm generalizing here so I'm sorry but like they have the reputation of gaslighting people uh, where's the data on that I don't know just 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 live life and you see it I don't even know that many yeah. like really hardcore radiohead fans I mean I don't really talk about radiohead with that many people so yeah. I don't know who who is being a male Ooh, I really like this this guitar part yeah i like the like the transition but i don't know i just what do you what do you think about that when it comes to because a lot of people consider like if you're a diehard radio hat fan you that's a huge red flag that's something i only heard in like the last year or so that people really? started yeah like male manipulator even that term is just such a like tiktok generation yeah. term and it's like we got to take all these 
male indie rock fans down a peg because they think they're and i i agree with this the people who are into this band and think that they're like the greatest thing ever and never shut up about it they're they're kind of are egotistical and like think they're holier than thou yeah it can get annoying quickly I mean, but also get this: if they're gonna make, if people are gonna make those kinds of comments about male manipulator music, then there is such thing as female manipulator music, which people don't want to talk about. Since like, can you think oh, of yeah. female manipulator bands or artists? I can think of one right now, but Tell I want you to me. think of Regina Spector. <laughs> I don't think she's manipulator music. I think she's so the fan base. Is. Earnest. The fan base. Uh, maybe. Maybe. That's someone like people of our age would identify yeah. with. Regina's been kind of off the grid for a few years. I think she just came. So back. has so has so has Radiohead. True, but did someone like burn you who listened to Regina Spector? No, in no. The you early know what's 2000s? funny? When I was a teenager, Radiohead fans burned me a lot. I had a lot of bullies that were hardcore Radiohead fans. So for so the longest weird. time, I. I could not like Radiohead, but it took me like five, six years to get over it. And now I like them. <laughs> yeah, I I don't go to listen to them that often these days, but I think overall they're one of the best bands. Um, yeah, the the male manipulator thing is really weird to me. I don't I don't know how long that moniker is gonna stick, and like anyone who mentions Radiohead is gonna get that applied to them i don't think it's fair because <laughs> i think they're pretty sensitive the the lyrical content does not encourage manipulation <laughs> true i don't true. know it's weird no, I, I see your point okay i'm gonna go go comic comedy for my number one <gasps> pick but comedy is a tiny but tim? it's genuine <gasps> a genuine affection i have is it tiny tim is it martin short no it's funnier is it? <laughs> I can't. It's not Weird Al. I know it's not Weird Al. This is another very new song. It just came out like this month. But an artist who's been one of the the most successful artists of his generation for a few years now. I wonder if you can guess from the the first couple notes. Uh, I'm gonna. Find it's not this. Psy. <laughs> No, I wish I had more East Asian artists on my list, but um, like the the girl who sings Otdar Min Chai from Cambodia on the the Rover soundtrack. That's the only song I know by her, but it's probably one of my favorite vocal performances ever. Have I played that for you? I, I don't remember I think, right now. I think I showed it to you on the Derek Trucks episode. Cause... Actually, let's play a little of that. Tell me if... Tell me if you've heard this one before. Is it Laotian or Cambodian? Very similar to Laotian. Dude, I love this kind of stuff. Makes me want to get high. <laughs> On weed. It just makes me want to float in the sea. Yeah. No, I, I don't know who this is. I, you haven't showed me this before. Well, I'm glad I brought it up. Is she your number one? No. <laughs> no. I you brought up Psy and I was like, oh wait, that reminds me of uh, this random That drum machine. you think of this song it's another example of my just top 40 pop i have a top 40 pop obsession you can't see it 
Okay. <laughs> Did you look? No, I only saw an arm. <laughs> is it Harry Styles? Close. I don't like Harry Styles, though. He has a couple good songs, but I don't think his think his voice is great. Oh, it's that guy. I forget his name. He did that huge special on Netflix during the COVID times, during 2020. I don't know if I saw that. Neither have I, but I heard it's really good. He plays piano a lot, right? He's more of a guitar guy. Okay. Then Could who is, be. Who Could is be. it? Ed Sheeran. No, I don't know. I, I was it wasn't Ed Sheeran who I was thinking about. He's comically? He's comical? I mean, for me to say Ed Sheeran's okay. my number yeah. one singer of all time feels yeah. a little comedy to me, but I genuinely okay. think this is a great song. I'm I'm surprised that you put, that you like Ed Sheeran. I, th- I never in my life have I thought that you were into this stuff. <laughs> he can sing. Yeah, and it's more that I like his choices melodically than I like. I'm not going to go and listen to this album again. I listened to it once, and I, this song really jumped out at me. Is and this I heard part of your trolling moments? Like you're trying to troll me or something? <laughs> not really. I you genuinely, I genuinely like wanted this. to talk about this song. Okay. I think it's a good song. <laughs> you Thoughts? you really enjoy this like production value of of this of this decade of this of this time. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, what sounds like this decade about this to you? Like the production, like the the drumming of it. Yeah. <laughs> like the all the reverb. Yeah. And what's the other one that you had in the list? The female? Caroline Polachek. Like, it kind of has that vibe, too. Similar. It definitely sounds very modern. And I wonder how this sound is going to age in, like, 10 years, if it's going to sound really dated. It'll probably sound like this era, no, like everything else sounds like it's What's era. crazy about this kind of music, it's like contemporary Christian music without the Christian music, without the Christianity. Or Christian music is just taking the sounds of modern pop. I guess, but I've I've been hearing that kind of stuff since the 2000s in contemporary Christian music. Yeah, that might be that might be true. <laughs> Which came first, the chicken or the egg? When it comes to that, do you prefer eating a chicken or do you prefer eating eggs? Are you more of an egg person or a chicken person? I like them both. Eggs in the morning, chicken at night. <laughs> in a sense, so ch- the egg does come first. How do you like your chicken? Ro- roasted, grilled, fried, steamed? Pretty much any way if you do it right. Gotcha. Depends on the mood. He's a good singer. He's a very good singer. He can... I, I see it. I'm just surprised that you put him on number one. <laughs> kind of because we ran out of... Tom York and this guy? <laughs> Tom ran... York and Ed Sheeran? <laughs> we ran out of lumbers and... Let me just list my number my runner-ups. I was going to talk about Robert Smith, The Cure, Robert Johnson, Barry Gibb. Hey, Barry Gibb is better than Ed Sheeran. A lot of the, pretty much all these people you could say are better than Ed Sheeran, but okay. uh, Ed Sheeran's someone fresh in my mind. Roy Orbison is actually on my list. Ariana Grande, Al Green, Sam Cooke, Chester Bennington, Morrissey, who's Jamie Chester, Stewart. Who's Chester Bennington? Link, Lincoln Park. Oh my God. He died. Oh my God. You don't like Chester? I'm not a Lincoln Park guy. I mean, I'm not either since I was in seventh grade, but, you know, those his voice is pretty undeniable. I have Morrissey, Jamie Stewart, Bernard Sumner I, from I, Joy Div- uh, New, New Order. I thought you were going to put Jamie Stewart on, number, on your list. I was really yeah. contemplating it. I've actually gone, been going back and listening to those early Shoe Shoe records lately. They're so good. Yeah. Um, Knife Play, A Promise, and Fabulous Muscles. Those are like Fabulous my three favorites. Fabulous Muscles. Oh, sorry. I Cremate me. Let me come in your face. <laughs> I don't know. The I like how you're like taking the general theme of the song and changing it around. Yeah. It's actually 
Come on my face. Come on my face as you beat me. <laughs> <laughs> Cremate me. We we should do a shoe shoe episode at some point. I might burn one of my yes. choices on that. Yes. Oh, dude. Uh, this is my pledge to all the Oddcast listeners. From now on, I'm going to do a better job of choosing I actual think, topics for I, I, Oscar to they, listen to. I think it's good. Dude, you can do it. I don't care. Uh, I'm going to listen to it. I know, but since Taylor Swift, I don't think I've like suggested that you listen to something. I've done like some weird one-off, like yeah. uh, top five guitars, top five vocalists. Let's but go it, to but, the Dali but, exhibit. But but we're we're going in a different road, which is fine. You know, people, some some people don't want to talk about music. I get it. And we're still talking about music yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, which is fine. But I consider something like this a way to kind of give a nod to artists that we're not going to spend a whole episode on but we just want to touch True. on why True. we like them and yeah and go what from they there mean from uh for us so i think that's a wrap that's a wrap and uh the next episode is black sabbath are we doing the full discography in one episode or well, are we the, breaking what, it up what do you want do you want to do the whole thing or do you want to break it up Let's let's try to do it all. I'll listen to every album by, by the next time we record. How many are there? Like thirteen? Thirteen, yeah. <laughs> I okay. can I can do that. I mean I can listen to that in a day. Yeah, I mean yeah, but okay, okay. <laughs> I might right. not have the deepest understanding and memory of every album, but I'll take notes. I do want to ask you, uh and so so keep this in mind while you're listening to it, your favorite Sabbath album. Okay. Okay. I'm sure I'll be able to answer that. Because there's a lot of that. there's a lot of fights in the Sabbath fan base. They kind of judge you like it's kind of like a Rorschach test. Like they judge you by what your favorite album is. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, and obviously it's subjective, so there's no right or wrong answer. But there's a right or wrong answer on the Sabbath fan base. And I'm kind of like the what's the word I'm looking for? The outcast? No pun intended. Like uh, of 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 the fan base because i have a certain favorite album and people are like how dare you say that it's it's this one but yeah that's just me are you gonna tell me yours or are we gonna wait we're we gonna wait we're gonna wait because i don't want i don't want to to uh in, in, inspire your you know inspire your influence influence your answer you know i'm, I'm excited for this because i uh, i like having music assigned to me for the podcast yeah because then I have to listen to music when I'm painting. Otherwise, I'll just listen to shitty video game podcasts yeah. and not really... Pay. Music puts me in a different zone that I think is very beneficial. So I'll probably pump out some Black Sabbath paintings yeah. in the next couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to it. I'm also excited to hear what you think of Ozzy versus Rodney James Dio. Mm. You know, seeing where that goes. Yeah. Stuff like that. It's going to be good. Um Look out for that in a couple weeks. We'll see. Jesus, now probably one music. weeks might not be in enough time. Yeah. Maybe two, we'll two, shoot two or two. three. Yeah, and we'll cover some songs, right? <sighs> yeah. Do you have Do you have any idea of what song by Black Sabbath you'd want to cover? I don't know. I'll think about it. <laughs> I'm scared because they're so good. <laughs> I don't know now. <laughs> like technically, or like just the vibe. Both vibe more than anything. The vibe because I think of them more as like almost stoner metal, where they're they're not super fast and tech. Like they're not like thrash. Well, I mean, I want to say this for the episode, but they are the trendsetter of stoner metal. They are the trendsetter of a lot of subgenres and metal bands. Stoner metal is one of them. So what I'm saying is like that stuff's not that hard to play. It's not that it's hard to more play, laid but back. it's but it's it's. I wouldn't say it's a challenge either, but it's finding the groove to make that feel good is the part that I'm just kind of queasy about. We'll do like a folk cover of Black <laughs> play folk ukulele. Metal. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment, please. For the, uh, We love it when you comment, guys. Uh, we have YouTube. I mean, no, not YouTube. Spotify. 
We have Apple. We have Google. You can look for us there. We're a little behind on the Apple and Spotify. We're we're still on like episode six. They'll come out once a week till we we're catching up. Then we'll be on the even schedule. But no worries, guys. We just appreciate that you're listening to it. Give it a share to other people. If they think they're going to like this, this is good, you know? We, we appreciate any kind of love. And also, we, 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 we there's some TikToks here and there, so enjoy that. Yes. Yes, and also we are in an Instagram, so don't, you know, you just do, drop a follow and all <laughs> that jazz. So thank you so much, and have a good rest of your day. Goodbye. Sponsored by Lucky Beer. <laughs> Lucky Buddha. Lucky Buddha. Okay. Are you recording now? Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not going to use it. <laughs> Unless it's really funny. Unless it's very funny. You're funny.